Hey Church, Pastor Shane here, and this is our Thursday devotional for Holy Week, or as some call today, Maundy Thursday. Uh, it's called Maundy Thursday because that word Maundy comes from the Latin word uh, for the word command. And it's called that because it's at this point in the, in the timeline of Holy Week that Jesus sits down to have a last Passover feast with his disciples. And during that time, he gives them a new command. He explains to them how they should live because he is starting to prepare them for the fact that he is going to die on the cross, he is going to be resurrected from the dead, and he's going to ascend into heaven, and they are going to be the ones that God uses to launch the church out into the world. So what is the command? The command he gives them is the command of love, to love God, uh, and more specifically, to love one another, and to love one another with the love of God. He shows this through a, a number of teachings, and each gospel treats it a little differently. Some have a little bit more content, like the book of John. Uh, some have a little, little bit less. Uh, but in all of them, the, he, he shows it in, in different ways that this command is to love one another. One of the ways he does it is through communion. That's the Last Supper where he institutes what we would today call communion or the Lord's Supper. Because communion is more than just about celebrating our communion and our connectedness to God because of what Christ has done for us, but also our connection to each other as the people of God, as those who are now part of God's eternal family because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And church, I hope you will come back and celebrate communion with us on Good Friday. Tomorrow, we are having a service online. It's going to be on our website, on YouTube, on Facebook, however you want to grab it. Uh, like we've been doing our Sunday services. It's going to be at 7 o'clock, and we're going to do communion together in a very odd way. It's going to be new for me, too. I've actually been someone who has felt very strongly about communion. I love it. I'm passionate about a way it expresses our connection to God and each other. Uh, I usually wouldn't even uh, suggest that small groups do it. It should be reserved for when the people of God all gather together. But we can't really do that right now. So we're going to find a way to make it happen, even if it's online. Even if we are physically separated, we will all still be doing communion together. And that's significant. And so I hope you'll join us for that. Don't worry, you don't have to have the, the actual communion supplies. Grab some kind of bread or something like it. I know you're not going to have grape juice probably ready at hand. Grab something else. Uh, those elements are significant. The grapes are significant. There's a lot of imagery in that. Uh, but for this week... We are going to have to celebrate a little differently. And, and, and if our intention is to have a physical representation of our, our, our connection to God and, and worshiping and being thankful to him because of what he's done through Jesus and our connection with each other, then God is going to honor that however we have the ability to do it. So stay tuned for that. But, but back to the Monday Thursday <laughs> devotional. Uh, the new command is to love one another. Another place that Jesus expresses that to his disciples is, is when he washes their feet. And that's told in, in John chapter 13. Uh, they're, they're getting ready to sit down for the feast. And uh, usually it'd be like a servant who would come and wash people's feet. If you're in a nice fancy household, that's kind of how it would work. It's a pretty lowly job. Fe people's feet are gross and grimy. They're all in sandal. They're walking in, you know, a lot of unpaved streets, a lot of animals. It's not exactly clean. Kind of want to clean your feet before a meal. Um, I, I think you'd all agree if you're kind of walking around in, in a place where animals are a major mode of transportation. Let's just put it that way. But instead of Jesus letting some servant do this or one of the disciples do it, Jesus is the one who gets down on his knees who takes out his outer robe and goes to wash the disciples' feet. And Peter can't handle this. He's like, you're Jesus. You're, you're the great teacher. You're, you are, you're a Lord. You can't be the one. This is a servant's job. And Jesus says, listen, Peter, you have to let me do this. You have to let me do this. Uh, it's what I, I have come to do. He came not just as a teacher, but as a servant. And he explains why he does it to the disciples too. And that, that's what I want to read now after he does this. When he had washed their feet... And put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I, then your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do know them. 
I'm not speaking of all of you, and he goes on to talk about the fact that Judas is going to betray him. But Jesus is making a powerful point here by being the one to actually go and wash the disciples' feet. He's saying that they should follow in his example, that that Jesus is going to be the perfect example of what a servant looks like, even though he is Lord, even though he is their teacher, even though he is the God of the universe, our God is one of love and kindness to us that we have not earned and do not deserve, and he expresses it in his servanthood. And we're going to see the fullness of that servanthood when Jesus goes to the cross voluntarily and dies in our place. Again, come watch our Good Friday service. We're going to be talking all about that and how that works and, and be encouraged by it. And also mourn uh, as well. It's it's an important night as a church uh, to observe Good Friday. But here he he is telling them, just simply through the washing of the feet, this is how you should be. You should have the heart of a servant. Not just that you would love others, but act out in that love uh, to, to serve them. To be the kind of people who are looking out for others, because that is what God has done for them. So church, I hope your prayer throughout this day, when you have a minute, maybe read over John chapter 13 yourself and spend a couple minutes asking the Lord how you can be that servant, how you could shine the light of Christ to others during this time, that you could not just do good deeds for your own benefit, but find a way to serve others, even if it's sacrificial for yourself, even if it takes some effort or even if it might cause some discomfort. That is who God has commanded us to be. None of us should think more of ourselves than than we ought. (laughs) Being a Christian means being humble. It it means admitting that that we have a sin issue, that we are by our nature selfish, and that we need God to transform us into a, a new people with a new heart, the heart of a servant, to love one another and to serve one another with the same kind of love that Christ has shown us, the love that sent him to the cross to die in our place. We hope to see you Friday night for our Good Friday service. Have a great week of worship, church.